Just before Hangul entered Hate Wang's church, he headed to the alley behind the building. It was the place where he first met Yushan while he was being beaten up by his bullies. There's even a brick there just like the one Yushan used to try fighting back. In this memorable place, Hangul leaves a picture. It was the only picture he had of him and Yuzhan back in the day when they were still brothers and happy. Back in the present, the fire inside the church rages on and it's starting to cause the church to fall. Outside, the second-in-command Wen Cheng watches as the fire consumes their headquarters. Yuzhong screams in pain as Hangul shoves his face into the blazing flames. He flails around and finally manages to kick Hangul off him, but half of his face is already disfigured and charred from the fire. Meanwhile, Hangul curses that he couldn't finish Yuzhong off. He picks up a knife and prepares to continue fighting. However, the stab wound on his shoulder is aching painfully, and his vision is getting blurry. Neither of them is okay, but he must do whatever he can to finish the fight. Yuzhong also picks up a knife and charges at Hangul. One late night back when they were still runaways at the hardware store, Hangul once asked Yuzhong whether he had a family. He shares that it sometimes feels lonely having no family, but after living for a few months, he feels that he's okay. After all, they now have a new family. Back in the present, the two former brothers slash each other with their knives. Yuzhong manages to wound Hangul's face while Hangul stomps on Yuzhong's feet and slashes at his face. It was an even match and they pushed against each other's knives. Hangul punches Yuzhong in the face and goes on the offensive, chaining blow after blow. After Yuzhong manages to slash Hangul's kicking feet, he holds him down and stabs him in the stomach. But despite being stabbed, Hangul just holds him in place and headbutts him. He was sitting on top of Yuzhong, but Yuzhong twisted the knife and kicked him off again. He shouts that he will destroy Yushan once and for all. A tired Hangul only stares at him, regretting how he couldn't stop his friend from changing. In the past, he cried at the thought that they could never be a family. But as of today, he's going to cut him off, figuratively and literally as he lunges at him with a knife. Just as they were about to collide, the fire caused a large explosion, turning everything white. Meanwhile, Daejin had successfully brought the injured girl to the hospital and is on his way back. He had also informed the others of what was happening, but when he reaches the church, his feet stop as he watches the whole church burning. People are running all around and firefighters are trying to put out the fire. He charges inside in the hopes of saving Hangul and shrugs off a fireman who tried to stop him. The church continues to burn, but Daejin braves the inside of the church. Falling ceiling and intense flames impede his progress, but the thought of Hangul urges him on. When he ran away from home, all he thought of was revenge, it was painful, but it's what he had to do to not die. But then, he was able to forget about revenge for a while when Hangul came into his life. He showed him how warm having a family can be. He still must pay him back, so he must save him. The other members of the Hangul Joe fam also arrived at the scene, but more firefighters stopped them from entering. The firefighters' hopes were bleak because the wind wasn't cooperating, and the flames proved hard to control. But a miracle occurred. Droplets of rain started pouring from the sky, dampening the flames and murdering them. Inside, Daejin is also finding it easier to navigate through the ruined church now that the flames are weaker. In one of the rooms, he finally finds what he's looking for. It was Hangul lying down on the ground with blood all over him and a piece of paper in his hand. Daejin kneels beside him and tries to shake him awake. Hangul's blood stains his hand and he picks him up to take him outside. He cryingly promises that he doesn't want revenge anymore if he just lies and doesn't leave him all alone again. Meanwhile, Hangul finally wakes up. He wonders where he is, but all he can see is the paramedics working on him. He also sees the Hangul Joe fan nearby, but they're all crying hard. He was happy to see all of them together and well. He looks at them one by one and recalls the good old days. Seong always reminded Hangul of himself. They were both orphans, so he couldn't stop himself from helping him when he found him in the streets. He looks so much happier now. As for Tat Kim, he looks so dependable now. In the past, he was so weak after he saved him from bullies that he begged Hangul to train him. Hangul feels at ease leaving Hangul fam with him. Gaeon was the only girl in their family, and she was always the mature one out of them all. Her circumstances forced her to mature at a young age, and he was so proud that in their times together, she was smiling and acting like her age. Dayop was always the troublesome one among them. He was a punk, but their family was able to laugh more thanks to his antics. Lastly, Daejin is the one he worries about the most. Handel feels sorry that he won't be able to look after him anymore. Just like Yuzhan, Daejin wants revenge and has a knack for fighting, but Handel is confident that he'll be different from him. 
Hangul wants to thank them all for making his life so much better. They all became his family and thanks to them, he was never lonely. In his dark life, these five people were the brightest stars. As Hangul's consciousness slowly fades, his hand drops the picture he was holding all this time. It was a picture of them all together. If he will ever be reborn, how he wishes they will all be his family again in the next life. A few months ago, just after Daejin had saved them from the gas attack, Hangul spent one whole afternoon convincing Daejin to just call him casually Hangul. He tries to insist that he wants to call Hangul by Sir, but Hangul reminds him that they are now real brothers. The fight at the church ended with Hangul's death. The group mourned his death along with close friends around the community like the pizza store. For Daejin, his death felt like he had lost everything in his life all over again. Hate Wing also took a huge hit after their headquarters burned down and they mysteriously disappeared. The streets were thus peaceful thanks to Hangul. The Hangul fam was faced with the threat of Hate Wang, but now they are also safe too. But this isn't what Daejin wanted. A few days later, Daejin heads out of their house confusing his friends. But in the alleys around the city, Daejin is beating up former members of Haekwang. They try to plead with him that they aren't members anymore, but Daejin keeps fighting with them. He feels guilty and he keeps wondering if he never left Hangul's side that day, then he could have helped him. Out of nowhere, someone interrupts his thoughts. It was the second in command of Haekwang, Won Chang, and he asked Daejin if he wants to destroy Haekwang too. In an abandoned warehouse deep in the woods, Yu Zhang is screaming in pain from everything that has happened. His lieutenants try to calm him down since he just got surgery for all his injuries, but he demands to know what happened to their group Haekwang. One of his lieutenants explained that they had lost their headquarters and a lot of their executives got hurt. Due to this, a lot of their members deserted and they lost a lot of their power. It's going to take a lot of time to return to what it was before. Yu Zhang curses Hangul for ruining all that he has worked for, but the others try to convince him that at least now, Handel is gone, and no one is there to stop them. However, Yu Zhang still cannot let it go. For him, there are still people that will get in the way. More specifically, Hangul's family. Once Haekwang recovers, he promises that they will get rid of them all. Back in the city, Wan Cheng informs Daejin that just like him, he also wants to destroy Haekwang. Daejin recognizes him from the church and tries to attack him too. But Wan Cheng easily dodges his punches and strikes him in the chest to stop him. He tells him that he's not part of Hate Wang anymore. He was disappointed that Hangul failed to destroy the organization. He commends the Hangul fam for being brave enough to fight with Hate Wang, but he points out that this isn't enough to defeat Yu Shang. They would need more power, and to that end, he suggested that they team up with him. He offers his hand to Daejin, but Daejin just spits on it. He angrily rejects Wan Cheng's offer and tells him that he has no intention of working with people like him. Wan Cheng laughs since he understands they're still reeling from Hangul's death. He tosses out a business card to Daejin and leaves. A few days later, Daejin is on the rooftop of their house holding Hangul's cigarettes. They have just received the few possessions Hangul had when he died, and it was one of them. He tries smoking it, but he immediately coughs it out. He stares at the bench Hangul always rested on, all those times they trained together. This home holds way too many memories of Hangul. He silently cries as he stares at Hangul's picture. Later that night, rain is pouring hard, but Daejin glances back at the house with a resolute face. He is about to exit the door when Dayup asks him if he's going out. He points out that it's raining outside, but Daejin replies that he must go do something. Unfortunately, it might take a while, Daedop asks him if he wants to come with him. But Daejin insists that he has to go alone. He promises to be back and walks out of the house. The rain soaks Daejin to the bone as he walks around the streets of the city. He recalls how Hangul and the Hangul fam had brought him happiness that he'll never be able to find in his life again. He texts Nanan that he can't work at the pizza store anymore. He also wonders why God had dashed his happiness once again. Maybe it's God's way of telling him to do what he had forgotten to do, revenge. On one of the alleyways, he spots a group of teens beating up a runaway teen. They demand that he join up with Haegwang, but the runaway refuses. Daejin confidently approaches them after seeing them. He picks up a brick and charges at the group. After defeating the group, he walks away from the runaway teen. However, the runaway gets up and asks him if instead of following Haegwang, can he follow him instead? He promises to help Daejin in any way in exchange. Daejin recalls how Wan Cheng told them they lacked power, and he remembers all the difficult fights he had against the executives. He tells the runaway kid to do whatever he wants and continues to walk. He will get stronger, and he will never lose anyone else ever again. 
He warns the kid that if he truly chooses to follow him, then he should be ready because Daejin plans to take over the streets. A year before Daejin joined Hangul family, Daeyop was the first one to run away from home and is now a delinquent on the streets. After just a month on the street, the 16-year-old Daeyop is bullying kids and ignoring adults. One afternoon, he was about to eat in the park when a stray dog approached him and begged for some food. The dog licks his hand, but Daeyop walks away, not wanting to share any of his food. He was about to leave the park when a gang of teens stopped him. They were part of Hate Wang, and they didn't like how Dayop was making trouble on their turf. Dayop knows that he shouldn't tangle with Hate Wang, so he continues to walk away from the park. However, the Hate Wang members didn't like how Dayop ignored them. They pick up the stray dog and threaten to hurt him if Dayop leaves. Dayop points out that it wasn't his dog. Disappointed, the Hate Wang member tosses the dog to his friend who was holding a bat. The friend was about to hit the dog with a bat when Dayop caught the dog and shielded it with his back. He yells at them that beating a dog is crossing the line and punches the teen in the face. Thus starts a brawl but Dayop manages to chase the gang away. The stray dog licks Dayop's hand and starts munching on the food that he dropped during the fight. Dayop wanted to care for the dog, but he knew that he couldn't afford to. Thus he says farewell to the dog and leaves. He hopes that the dog will find a family soon. Thankfully, a little girl and her father saw the stray dog and the girl quickly wanted to adopt it. Meanwhile, Dayop hopes that he'll get a family soon too. Under the shade of the slide, Handel was sleeping and smiled after overhearing the whole thing. A year before Dejin joined the Hangul family, Gaehan was the one lost in the streets. She was crying in the streets after surviving for just a week, begging for her mom and dad. Another teen notices her and asks if she's okay. He kindly introduces himself as Ji Yen and holds out his hand. Later, they were eating in a restaurant where Ge Yen shared everything she went through. Ji Yen also shares that he also ran away in the past and is now a member of a runaway fam. He offers to give her a spot in their family, with a job and a place to sleep. Ge Yen smiles at Ji Yen's kindness and happily accepts. But a few hours later, Ge Yen's world came crashing down all over again. Ji Yen had brought her to one of the adult bars in the red light district where the male staff quickly snickers at her. They praise Ji Hyun for bringing another girl in. Gaeon angrily asks Ji Hyun why he brought her there, but Ji Hyun glares at her and grabs her arm. Gaeon's trust is broken all over again, and she immediately throws Ji Hyun to the ground. She then runs out of the establishment before any of the other guys can grab hold of her. The other adults try to chase after her and explain that all she needs to do is pour drinks for the customers. However, the adults were violently stopped by someone. A few hours later, Gaon is crying and shivering in the streets while a storm pelts her with rainwater. She berates herself for trusting someone in the streets and getting fooled. However, a stranger abruptly puts a coat over her and holds an umbrella against the rain. It was Hangul. Gaon was still suspicious of anyone so she quickly threw away the coat, but the stranger insisted she hold on to the umbrella. He then gives her a business card from a billiards hall and tells her that they're looking for someone to employ. Then he walked away. Gaon walks around confused about the guy who just helped her, but she is still suspicious that he could have been working with the adults from earlier. However, her feet led her back to the adult entertainment bar, and she saw that the adults chasing her earlier had all been beaten up. Maybe just maybe, Gaon could be foolish and trust someone one more time. She quickly runs back to where she met Hangul and asks him where he is staying. Every day, Tuck Kim trains to become stronger. The other members of the Hangul fam wonder why he trains so much, but he has a reason for getting stronger. In the past, he had always been alone. Every day in the streets, he gets beaten up by thugs stronger than him. But a kind girl helped him when he was down. It was Nae Yun. Nae Yun took him to their pizza store and fed him until he was full. Her father also offered to feed him any time he gets hungry in the future. Their supreme kindness brought Tak Kim to tears and he thanked them profusely. It was the best pizza he had ever tasted. However, the bullying never stopped. If he could just get strong enough, he could have fought them off. But this time, a kind stranger named Hangul saved him and fought the bullies for him. Tak Kim was amazed at how Hangul knocked the bullies out in just a few seconds, and he quickly begged him to teach him how to fight. Of course, Hangul couldn't say no and thus started Tak Kim's special training. It was so tough that he thought he would die, but he persevered. When he got stronger, he finally fought off his bullies and no one could harass him ever again. Hangul congratulates him for successfully finishing his training. Tak Kim wonders if he should train some more, but it was so painful and boring that he decided not to. 
He soon realized the training he did was not enough. One day, he sees his favorite pizza store getting torn up by a gang. The gang was angry that they didn't pay the protection racket, so they were trashing the pizza place. Tech Kim became so furious that he immediately attacked the group despite being outnumbered. Later, the gang leaves the scene after beating Tot Kim. After that, Tot Kim realized why he had to get even stronger. He had received too much help from others like Hangul and the pizza store. But now it's time that he is the one who protects them all. A year before Daejin joined the Hangul fam, Songbin was at death's door. He was about to die when he met Hangul. The two spent their runaway days together enduring starvation. Hangul suggests that they steal Tuna again from the cats but Seongbin rejects this idea and instead leaves to find a job. Unfortunately, it wasn't that easy for a runaway miner to find a job. He asked around in coffee shops, but they all need parents' consent before hiring a miner. In other places, they see the scars on Seongbin's arms, and they couldn't hire someone who inflicted self-harm. He tried to hide it, but when adults found out, they were all reluctant to hire him because he might be mentally unstable. Seongbin was feeling hopeless at his situation when an adult suddenly asked him if he wanted his scars hidden. The adult brings him to a tattoo parlor where he explains that getting a tattoo would cover up his scars. Seongbin agrees and the man starts inking his arms. A few days later, Seongbin smiles as he admires the new tattoos all over his arms, expertly masking the scars beneath. He asks the man why he helped him, and the man admits that Seongbin reminds him of his past. He was feeling hopeless too but he got lucky and met some people who taught him his trade as a tattoo artist. He assures Songbin that no matter how dark it might seem, there will be a ray of light one day if they keep on living. Songbin was about to leave the tattoo parlor when he stopped and shyly asked the man if he could be a tattoo artist too. A year later, Songbin arrives back in their place bringing food to the house. He happily announces that he just got paid so dinner's on him tonight. He realizes that the tattoo artist was right, and he got lucky meeting some great people. His friends, Dayap and Tech Kim, were his first customers. While they were celebrating their new tattoos, Wang Chin, who was getting a tattoo of his own, curiously watched them. One year later, at Daejin's old school, Doyen, his old bully, has a new pet. He sits on his back and even forces him to eat his discarded ice cream. Doyen reminds his new pet that in the past, there was a kid named Daejin that they used to bully. He even tried to murder him, but in the end, Doyen in return ordered the death of Daejin. So if the bully kid doesn't want to die, then he should listen to his orders. During class time, the bully kid is happy. He doesn't really like to study, but during this period, the bullies couldn't hurt him outright. But no matter how much he wishes for it, class time always ends, and he goes back to his life as being the bully's pet. Outside the school, an army of armed teens is causing a commotion. At the rooftop, Doyen and his friends continue to bully the kid. He orders the kid to undress, and when the kid doesn't follow his orders, he starts slapping him around. The kid shakes in fear, but Doyen just throws his slipper down into the courtyard below. Doyen orders the kid to go take it, and he has no choice but to go down there crying. He hates himself for not having the courage to even try and fight back. He was about to pick up the slipper, but someone else beat him to it. It was Daejin leading an army of runaway kids. He picks up the slipper and gives it to the kid. He also asks the kid if the slipper came from the rooftop. Daejin then leads his army inside the school, past all the terrified students, and up to the rooftop. Some of the students recognize their former classmate, but they notice that something's different about him. He seems like an entirely different person. The bullies on the rooftop are about to leave when they see the army of teens blocking the stairwell. Doyen was shocked to see that Daejin, who was supposed to be dead, was standing in front of them. Some of Daejin's past bullies try to climb up onto the rooftop to see Daejin, but Daejin's men block their way. They tried to push their way through, but Daejin's men didn't even budge. They quickly got scared and backed away. Meanwhile, Daejin tells Doyen that he knows that he was the one who paid to have him murdered. Doyen points out that it's just fair since Daejin was the first one to try to murder him. However, Daejin hits him in the face with a pipe. Doyen clutches his wounded cheek, and he realizes how perilous his situation is. Daejin is clearly dangerous, and so are the kids he brought along with him. He prostrates himself in front of Daejin and profusely apologizes. He begs him for forgiveness for everything he has done. He smiles when Daejin drops his weapon, but Daejin just starts slapping him instead. He asks Daejin what he wants from him, but Daejin keeps beating him up. Doyen couldn't take it anymore, and he ran away. Unfortunately, Daejin's men stop him and threaten to throw him off the building. Doyen looks at Daejin's face and to his horror, 
Dajin is seriously contemplating having him murdered. He couldn't control himself any longer and he pisses himself. He begs Dajin to spare him and the other students watching couldn't believe how their former bully is being degraded right before their very eyes. Doyen ignores them and instead focuses on begging for Dajin's forgiveness. He regrets doing everything and his decisions even caused Hangul to die. The mention of Hangul's name triggers Dajin and he shoves his foot into Doyen's mouth. He tells Doyen that Hangul died because of Hate Wang and Yuzhan, not because of a weakling like Doyen. He doesn't care about Doyen any longer and all he wants is how he contacted Hate Wang when he tried to have him murdered. But if they ever cross paths again, he will murder Doyen. After this threat, Dajin leads his army out of the school, leaving the terrified Doyen with his friends. That night, in a warehouse somewhere in the city, a man is being tortured by Iltak Kyo. Iltak is the one in charge of the contract hits for Hagwan. When the man still doesn't want to pay, Iltak continues to use the man as his punching bag. Meanwhile, Dajin is in the city reminiscing about the times he had with Hangul. But Hagwan took everything from him. That was why he will dedicate his life to eradicating Hagwan. He heads to the warehouse and confronts Iltak. Iltak was surprised to see him, but Dajin blasts him back in one punch. He then demands to know where Yuzhan is. Iltak always wanted to be on top of the food chain. Back when he was still in school, he was that. But after he lost to Dajin, his entire life changed. The people who used to idolize him started to look down on him. But just when he thought his life was over, that was when he met Hate Wang and Yuzhan. He immediately recognized that Yuzhan was at the top of the food chain, and he wanted to be like him. Thus, he joined the organization and promised himself that he would climb the ranks until he was back on top. Things were going well, but why did Dajin show up again? Iltak's men surround Dajin and charge at him. However, Dajin deftly dodges the swings of their bats and fights them off. He punches one of them and blinds the other with a handful of sand. He then kicks their discarded weapons up to their face. The gangsters were surprised that someone barged in on their operation, but now, they are even more surprised that this person is holding his own against all of them. Iltak recalls how Dajin humiliated him in the past and this fuels him to stand back up. He kicks Da Hien and challenges him to a fight. He had been training all this time and it was time to get his revenge. However, Dajin dodges all his blows and even catches his kick. He then slams his fist into Iltak's stomach, causing him to keel over. He could hear his subordinates start doubting him again. Not wanting a repeat of the past, Iltak pulls out a knife and slashes at Dajin. Dajin dodges these two, and when Iltak charges in, he deflects the knife with a piece of broken wood. He then tells Iltak that he seems to be focused on revenge, but Dajin doesn't even care about him at all. He then disarms Iltak and breaks his arm. He then asks his question one more time, where is Yuzhong Shin? When Iltak doesn't answer, Dajin steps on his broken arm and puts pressure on it. Iltak could see his men watching and he could feel that they were starting to look down on him like they did before. But this time, Iltak didn't give up. He is about to slam his knife into Dajin's foot, but Dajin kicks the knife away from him and catches it. He then stabs it directly into Iltak's hand. Iltak screams in pain from the wound, but Dajin isn't done yet. He rests the knife against the back of Iltak's foot and threatens to cut off his tendons if he doesn't reveal everything he knows. Iltak finally gives up and admits that he doesn't know either. Yuzhong's location is top secret even within Heguang. However, he does know someone who can tell Daejin where Yuzhong is. More specifically, he knows Yuzhong's closest associate, Song Ho Moon. When Daejin hears Song Ho's name, he recalls how Song Ho had tricked him in the past. He wonders if maybe it's time to meet his former friend. Now that he has told Daejin everything, Iltak demands to be let go. However, Dajin points out that Iltak still doesn't know Song Ho's location. Therefore, he'll take something else as a consolation prize. He then slices through Iltak's tendons and walks away. Outside, a group of men meets with him and asks him how it went. They were led by Dajin's second-in-command, Du Giam. Dajin asks them why they followed him so Du Giam explains that they only came because they were worried about him. Sure enough, they successfully defeated every goon around the area. Dejin shares that Iltak didn't know where Yuzhan was. However, he did learn that they would need to find a hate wine executive, more specifically, Shan Ho Moon. Do Giam pats Dejin on the shoulder and encourages him. He also invites him to go have dinner with them, but Dejin walks away from the group. The Dejin crew lives in an abandoned construction site. One of its members is Undong Kim, a 15-year-old runaway. 
It was hard that they all lived together in an abandoned building, but it's a lot better than living and sleeping in the streets. The other teenagers living there are all older than him and a little scary. However, that's okay. When one of them tries to order him, he reminds them of the rules of their group. They couldn't order each other around. Still, everyone listens to what Daejin says. They're all there for different reasons, but they are currently living in harmony thanks to Daejin. When Undong first ran away, he ended up joining a motorcycle gang. They tried teaching him how to pickpocket and when they failed, the leader beat him up. He ran away again, but he almost died due to starvation and cold. That was when Daejin showed up. Thanks to him, he now has a roof over his head and a hot meal in his stomach. He promises to repay Daejin for his kindness one day. When he notices the time, he heads upstairs to Daejin to give him his protein shake. Daejin was always working out and he thanked Undong for the drink. He asks him how he's doing in the crew and advises him that if he ever wants to leave, then he shouldn't hesitate and go. Undong stares at Daejin and informs him that he considers them their family now, and Daejin is his older brother. Daejin stares at him and asks him to go back inside. At night, the other crew members wonder why Daejin always seemed to be cold to them. He doesn't eat with them or even talk a lot. Others explain Daejin's past to them, with how he used to have another runaway family, but they lost someone like a brother to him so Daejin must now be trying hard not to get attached to anyone else. But this time, there was an emergency. One of the members approaches Daejin and informs him that Undong has disappeared. Outside, Yundong is looking for other runaways. He was hoping to find some clues about Hate Wang and help Daejin in any way he could. Unfortunately, it wasn't a group of runaways that he found but the motorcycle gang that he ran away from. The leader catches Undong spying on them, and he starts beating him up for running away. Yundong shouts at them that he joined another group and he will never return to them. The leader laughs and asks him why another group would ever accept a useless kid like Undong into their ranks. He grabs hold of Undong and threatens to shove him into the spinning wheels of his motorcycle. Undong closes his eyes and realizes that everything they say is true. He is really useless and he is just dead weight. He remembers when Daejin saved him that one snowy night and he asks him why he is helping him. Daejin replies that he also doesn't know but Undong just seemed to look like he needed help. Undong's face is inches away from the spinning wheel when someone suddenly tells them to stop. It was Daejin. Daejin grabs hold of the motorcycle leader's face and slams it into the ground. The other members are stunned to see their leader down while Daejin asks Undong if he can beat all of them up. Daejin instructs Undong to stay behind him as he faces off with the rest of the motorcycle gang. The gang laughs at him and its second in command. A tall guy named Wonyeop leads them to attack Daejin. Daejin knocks the first two enemies and Wonyeop compliments his fighting skills. He charges himself at Daejin and uses his long arms to barrage him with punches. His confidence increases when Daejin just blocks the attack, but it turns out it was because he was aiming for Wonyeop's legs. Wonyeop falls when Daejin puts a well-placed kick into his shins. He was about to finish him off when the motorcycle leader suddenly woke up and held Undong hostage with a knife. Wonyeop thanks his boss and charges at the now defenseless Daejin. However, the motorcycle leader's face gets kicked by another person who arrives. It was Do Gyeong leading the other members of the Daejin crew. The motorcycle gang is surprised at this new group of enemies while Do Gyeong tells Daejin that he can leave the small fries to him. He should just continue with what he was doing. Daejin nods and proceeds to punch Wonyeop once more. Wonyeop realizes that they might have picked a fight with the wrong guy and strangely, Daejin seems to remind him of Hangul. After the fight, Yundong apologizes to Daejin for causing trouble. He cries and apologizes for being a dead weight to their group, but Daejin stops him. Daejin tells him that he's not a dead weight, he's family. Thus, they happily go back to their base. Daejin had lost his family many times. He lost his real family and the family he met on the streets. That's why he will make sure there will be no third time. Back at their base, Du Giam asks him why he went to rescue Undong. The boss should have just let his men handle it and not expose himself to more danger. If Daejin is caught, then their revenge against Yu Zhang would be over. Daejin stares at his lieutenant and tells him that he is not the boss. The two are about to argue when one of their men barges into the room and reports that there's another trouble. Some fool is causing a ruckus on the first floor shouting after Daejin. Down below, their men are getting beaten up one by one. Du Jim arrives and asks the stranger what he wants, but Daejin is surprised when he sees who it is. It was Daeyop. Daeyop immediately runs toward Daejin and asks for his help. Their brother Tak is in mortal danger. Daeyop explains how Tak was captured by Haegwang. 
One year ago, the rest of the Hangul fam decided to disband and go their separate ways. They also promised that no matter what happens, they shouldn't mess with Hate Wang anymore. They acknowledged that even though they want revenge, it would just be too dangerous. What Dayop didn't notice back then was that even though they all agreed to it, Tak's face was filled with fury. Tak then attacked Hate Wang on his own but lost. Currently, he's being held at the ancient port base which Hate Wang uses as the location where they harvest their organs and sell them overseas. At midnight, Tak will be sold to organ traffickers, and they will never be able to see him anymore unless they save him before then. They already went their own ways, but Dayop reminds him that they are still family. Endong overhears their conversation and enthusiastically urges everyone to go and save him. After all, they are family. The other members also enthusiastically volunteer, but they are all stopped by Do Gyeom. Do Gyeom points out that Hate Wang is no longer an organization made up of runaway teens. It has grown dramatically and is now a huge criminal syndicate. Compared to them, Daejin Crew is just a runaway family of 30 people. If they try to fight Hate Wang, then that would be like fighting a tiger barehanded. Dajin agrees with everything that Do Gyeom said, but he is still going. Do Gyeom then reiterates that Dayop is his old family. If he leaves, then he'll be choosing his old family over his new one. Thus, he must decide carefully. A few minutes later, Daejin leaves with Dayop. Dayop asks him if that is okay, but Daejin tells him that it doesn't matter. They should just focus on rescuing Tak. On the way to the port, Dayop smiles and tells Daejin how good it is to see each other again. He almost didn't recognize Dajin because now he's bigger and is even leading his own family now. What changed? Dajin narrates how when he first left their house he couldn't sleep properly. In the past he was focused on his own revenge. But after Hangul died, he now dedicated his life to revenge for Hangul. He was ready to fight last year, but he also knew that he didn't have enough power. Thus he trained endlessly. He fought constantly. Nothing else mattered but fighting and improving his skills every single day. He promises Dayop that he will get revenge. Dayop stares at him curiously and asks him if he made a family just for that. Dajin replies that he just saved a few kids and they started following him around. They only started focusing on revenge when he met Do Gyeom Bake. Do Gyeom also wanted to murder Yu Zhang. An ancient port, Tak's wounded body is being stomped and kicked on by no other than the hate wang executive, Song Ho Moon. He also shares with Tak that he spread a little info about his capture as bait. Hopefully, someone will bite and try to rescue him. Just as he predicted, two intruders have just knocked out their perimeter guards and are approaching the port. Dayop and Dajin had arrived at Insham Port. After interrogating one of the guards, they learn that the people whose organs will be sold are gathered in the warehouse by the docks. Unfortunately, it was too heavily guarded for a frontal assault. Dayop is thinking of another possible strategy when Dajin remarks that he could probably take them all on. Dayop was confused by his remark, but Dajin agreed with him that another alternative strategy might be better. They might put Tak in danger if they find out they're there. Dajin looks around the docks until he thinks of another idea. Near a container by the docks, a group of hate wine members were beating up a pair of prisoners. However, they get scolded by their boss who berates them for messing with the products. The boss points out how much they could sell the organs of their prisoners, from the eyes, stomach, bladder, and all the way to the heart. Thus, they shouldn't mess with the prisoners unless they want to pay. He was about to order his men to put the prisoners on the ship when Daejin abruptly appeared and violently kicked him. Dayop also shows up and beats the other guards. They successfully saved the two prisoners whom Daejin advised to leave as quietly as they could. A few minutes later, the guards in the warehouse are busily chatting when they notice a fire in the nearby containers. They quickly rush in to put it out before any executives might notice and punish them. Dajin and Dayop watch as all the guards run towards the fire. Dajin's idea was to use the fuel in the motorcycles by the containers. After beating up the guards there, they put the motorcycles in flames to lure Hei Wang's henchmen outside the warehouse. The plan works and they charge into the warehouse. There were still a couple of guards, but Dayop and Dajin quickly knocked them all out. As more and more of their companions get knocked out, the guards recognize that the two are former Hangul family members. That would mean they were there for Tak. They find Tak inside the warehouse and try to comfort him. However, Tak warns them that it is all actually a trap. Unfortunately, it was too late. Seong Ho arrives with an army of men, and they close the door behind them. The two are now surrounded and Seong Ho greets them all. Daejin's face contorted in fury upon seeing his former friend. Seong Ho orders his men to attack and Dayop prepares himself for a fight. 
However, the first enemy gets punched by Daejin so hard that he crashes back into his allies. Daejin greets Sanong Ho and lifts his fist for the fight. More and more hate Wang henchmen charge at Daejin, but Daejin keeps knocking them out with his punches. Daeop is fighting too, but he is confused and surprised at Daejin's fighting strength. He is starting to wonder what really happened during the past year. Meanwhile, Sanong Ho wants to join the fight, but a subordinate informs him that it's almost time to meet with their clients. Thus, he had to leave Daejin to someone else. Daejin and Daeya continue fighting while Sinong Ho has his men pick up the wounded Tak. He tells them that unfortunately, their customer is waiting so he must go first. He exits the warehouse with Tak in tow. Daejin runs to follow him, knocking out every gangster in his way. He was almost out the door when a powerful punch sent him reeling back. A lanky tall man enters the warehouse and introduces himself as Mingyu, a hate Wang executive. The Hate Wine members cheer at his arrival while Dayop charges at him. However, he was still some distance from Mingyu when a punch landed on his face. He tries to counterattack with his own punches, but his fists can't even reach Mingyu. His arms are so freaking long that their reach is so far apart. Dayop gets pelted by Mingyu's punches while the other Hate Wine members' morale boosts upon seeing how strong their boss is. Dayop realizes that if Mingyu is an executive, then that means that he's probably as strong as Joan Chien and Gangrak, people they had to fight in the past which took their whole family to beat. Dajin dashes forward and Dayop tries to warn him about the executive. Mingyu also prepares himself to punch Dajin, but he gets punched instead. Surprisingly, Dajin got past his reach. Dayop tries to attack again, but Dajin dodges underneath his arm and lands another punch into his face and body. Mingyu realizes that Daejin must be able to read his moves and attack when there's an opening. Finally, Daejin lands a powerful flying kick directly into Mingyu's jaw, blowing him back. Dayop was amazed to see Daejin not only fighting against an executive solo, but even dominating against him. Mingyu realizes that he might lose if this continues, so he orders his men to attack simultaneously. They surround and distract Daejin, which allows Mingyu to land a kick on him. More men surround Daejin while Mingyu observes and waits for him to get tired. He knows that if this continues, then he will surely win. However, he forgot about Daeop who quickly grabbed hold of Mingyu while he was distracted and threw him into the side. He shouts at Daejin to go and save Tak while he keeps the others at bay. Daejin nods and exits the warehouse. The others try to follow him, but Daeop closes the door and guards it. Meanwhile, at the end of the docks, Seong Ho meets with the foreigner clients. The foreigner compliments the new product, but their meeting is interrupted when Daejin arrives. Daejin threatens all of them, but Seong Ho mentions to the client that Daejin is also a product, he just doesn't know it yet. Back at the Daejin crew hideout, Mundong asks Do Giam if they are really letting Daejin go somewhere dangerous alone. Do Giam explains to Undong that currently, Daejin isn't fit to be their leader, and he would not help him without a good cause. Yundong tries convincing him some more, but Do Giam's phone rings and what he reads surprises him. At the docks, Songo points out to Daejin that he should have fled when he was able to escape the warehouse. Now he would have to end his life too. The client smirks and asks Songho not to damage the product too much. Songho compliments Daejin's new look and asks if he is getting stronger. However, Songho himself wasn't lazy the past year and had improved his skills. He removed his jacket and showcased his muscular body. He laughs and points out to Daejin that even if he trained for a whole year, he would still have to overcome Songho's natural fighting talent. The client's bodyguard asks the client if they should really let Songho handle Daejin. However, the client wasn't worried. He tells his bodyguard that in the past, they used to trade with another person named Hangja. Hangja was an old gangster, but he rose to the top with the use of his fists. But the one who took him down was a 17-year-old rookie named Songho Moon. He has been a criminal for a long time, but when he witnessed the fight between Sinong Ho and Hang Jae, he realized that Sinong Ho was a fighting genius. That was one of the reasons he agreed to deal with Haegwon. However, the client was stunned when he saw Sinong Ho getting beaten by this new stranger, Daejin. Sinong Ho charges again, but no matter what he does, Daejin slips through his attacks and counters with devastating blows. Sinong Ho realized that maybe he wasn't the only one born with fighting talent. He commends Daejin's prowess and raises his hand in surrender. Daejin was confused and asked Song Ho what he was doing. Meanwhile, Song Ho receives a report that they finally captured Dai Op in the warehouse. He then informs Daejin that if he continues to fight back, then he'll murder Tak and Dai Op. Left with no choice, Daejin could only defend as Song Ho attacked him once more. 
Seongho remarks that Daejin really hasn't changed. He's still weak when it comes to his family. He was surprised when Daejin suddenly caught his fist. Daejin then shares that he hadn't just trained the past year. In the warehouse, Mingyu is about to order his men to break Dayup's limbs when he suddenly gets kicked. Du Giam and the Daejin crew had arrived. He rescues Dayup and tells him that earlier, Daejin had texted them that he found Songho. That means this is now related to their revenge against Haegwai. At the docks, Songho's group is also surrounded by the Daejin crew. One of his men approaches Daejin and informs him that they have secured Dayup. They'll rescue Tak too, so Daejin should focus on Songho. Seonho was still reeling from the fact that Daejin made his own organization when he abruptly got punched. As he stumbles to the ground, Seonho realizes that Daejin isn't just planning to rescue Tak. He came to truly destroy Haekwang. At the dockyard warehouse, the forces of Haekwang and Daejin crew collide. Even Undong is helping in protecting Daeop and beating the gangsters. Meanwhile, Du Giam duels with Minyu in a battle between the executives of the two groups. However, Du Giam seems to have the upper hand after landing an upper kick directly into Minyu's chin. Meanwhile, at the docks, Seonho and Daejin's duel also resumes amidst their fighting subordinates. However, Seonho tells Daejin that gathering a few runaways doesn't mean he's become somebody. They still can't hold up against the might of Haekwai. Daejin interrupts Seonho's monologue and asks him why he ever betrayed him in the first place. He really thought they were friends. He asks him what he gets from joining Haekwai. Seonho laughs and replies that he just likes doing fun stuff. He ran away from home because he was bored. For example, hitting someone is fun but he couldn't do it at school or at home. This confuses him since people cheer when they see violence in movies, but why does our society say it's bad? But in Haekwai, no one stops him. He could live the life he wanted in the organization. He could have as much fun as he wanted. He then charges again at Daejin, but Daejin knocks him back again. Seonho is now getting confused as to why Daejin seems to be so strong now. He trained also, so what's the difference between them? Daejin continues pummeling him and explains that unlike Seongho, the punches that he throws have no laughter. Seongho drops to the ground defeated while Daejin's men successfully bring Tak to him. Another one reports that they had successfully conquered the warehouse too. He congratulates everyone and starts browsing through Songho's phone in the hopes of finding a clue about Yu Zhang's location. However, it turns out that he didn't need to do this since Songho himself abruptly spoke up. Songho smiles at him and informs him that a boat is coming towards them. And aboard that boat is, of course, the leader of Haekwang, Yu Zhang Shin. Daejin's whole body shakes in anger upon seeing the target of his revenge. Meanwhile, Songho continues to explain that Yu Zhang works globally now. Tonight, he's only visiting Korea from China. This also means that all Haekwang would welcome him. That means only one thing. Daejin and his friends are screwed. Outside the docks, more and more Haekwang members are pouring in. Not only that, the executives and leaders of their own groups are arriving. Among them include the student Yusuk Kang, old executives Aram Ju and Gwang Ak Seol, the adult executive Sungryeon Choi, and the businessman Da Chang Gwak. Dajin realizes that they might be in a very dangerous situation. Du Giam also arrives and reports that they are already surrounded. They must run away before it gets any worse. Dajin asks why he would run away when their target is right before them. Du Giam responds by grabbing Dajin and shaking him. He pleads to him that if they stay, then every member of their group will die. Meanwhile, Yu Zhang also approaches the shore and greets Dajin. As time passes by, more and more Haekwang members encircle the Daejin crew. Du Giam shouts at Daejin that they should go but Daejin is just standing still staring at Yu Zhang in the boat. Du Giam tries to reason with him that he wants to get revenge on Yu Zhang too, but they have to save the others first. Memories of Hangul flash in Daejin's mind and he finally relents. He tells everyone that they're going home. They already got what they came for and that should be enough. They ride their motorcycle out of the docks and Daejin leaves one last glare at Yu Zhang, promising to come back for him. They are almost out of the gate when a dump truck suddenly blocks their path. They were about to turn around and find another path, but the Haekwang members and executives were now blocking the way there too. With containers blocking their sides and Haekwang on the front and back, they are truly surrounded. The Daejin crew members are starting to panic, but Daejin steps in front of them all. He then announces that since they have no choice, they will be going straight through them. They all disembark from their bikes and Daejin orders them to follow him. On the other side, the executives order their men to attack. The brawl starts with Daejin right in the middle of it. 
Meanwhile, Dogiem attacks the executive Sungryong, who stepped out of the dump truck. Sungryong dodges Dogiem's fists and lands an uppercut into his face. He commends Dogiem's passion but explains that they still cannot beat Heiguang. Meanwhile, more and more of the Daejin crew are getting mobbed by the advantageous numbers of the Heiguang henchmen. Even Undong, who was trying to protect the wounded Tak, is being attacked by the enemies. However, the situation changed when Dogiem suddenly got into the truck and turned it on. He orders the others to quickly get in. Sungryong realized that Dogiem must have allowed himself to be hit earlier so that he could pickpocket the truck keys from him earlier. Meanwhile, the Daejin crew members jump into the truck and hold onto its side. Sungryong tries to catch up to them, but Daejin kicks him, forcing him to defend. A few seconds later, the truck was already speeding off with all the Daejin crew clinging to it. The truck exited the gate and drove off farther and farther from the port. They all laughed, but it wasn't over yet. Heiguang henchmen are following them riding motorcycles. In fact, they are getting closer and closer since motorcycles are much faster than their trucks. Thankfully, Dogion has an idea. The Heiguang members pursuing them were confused when the Daejin crew stopped the truck. They wonder if they have given up, but it turns out the dump truck was just emptying its contents all over the road. The motorcycles and their drivers ended up getting washed away by the tons of dirt from the truck's trailer. The truck then sped away again with all the Dejin crew members comfortable sitting in a now empty trailer. They nurse their wounds, but they still successfully complete their mission and escape. A few hours later, they are back at their hideout in the city. Du Giam and Dejin are conversing on the rooftop where Du Giam surmises that Hate Wang will target them from now on. He asks Dejin what they should do. Dejin admits that Hate Wang's power exceeded their expectations. They truly are no match for them. With all its executives and soldiers trying to exact their revenge on Yuzhong is impossible. Thus, they only have one choice. They would need to increase their strength too. Later, Yundong approaches Daejin and invites him to a party. Since they have just fought with Hate Wang and survived, they are having their first victory meal. The others are already cooking downstairs. Some members explain that they won but others reason that since they rescued Daejin's friend, then they technically won. If they fought, they would have died for sure. Thus, they should enjoy eating again. Daejin smirks while watching his men eat and promises to buy more meat for them. Some of them thank Du Giam for his quick thinking with the truck and ask him where he learned to drive one in the first place. Du Giam tells them that his father is a truck driver, so he learned from them, but he got quiet after. He also notices Daejin leaving the room. Daejin heads to the rooftop, still angry and disappointed that he couldn't go after Yuzhong. He was just a few meters away, but he still couldn't do anything. Du Giam follows him to the rooftop and consoles their leader. He reasons that with how the situation turned out, they had no choice but to retreat for the sake of the others. And now Hei Wang themselves will come for them. Meanwhile, at the port, all the Hei Wang executives are waiting for their boss to show up. Suddenly, Sinon Ho kicks in the door and angrily shouts at them for letting the Daejin crew escape. However, Sung Ryan just punches him in the face. Sungryong also points out that Sinongho was the one who got defeated, and now he wants the others to clean up his mess. He remarks that maybe they should just replace all the old executives with new ones. The other two old executives, Aramju and Gwangak Seol, take offense at this suggestion. Gwangak stands up and advises Sungryong that he should just stay quiet. Of course, Sungryong just snickers in his face. The two are about to come to blows when the door opens and their boss, Yuzhan, arrives. After they all sit down, Yuzhong quietly asks them if it's true that the Hangul fam really escaped them. The executives bow their heads and admit that they weren't prepared enough, but instead of getting angry, Yuzhong shakes with laughter. He touches his scar and wonders why Hangul seems to bother him even beyond the grave. Meanwhile, one of the executives, Yuzik Kang, speaks up. He tells Yuzhong that they don't need to worry about Daejin crew at all. The truck they drove off in when they ran away actually still has Sungryong's phone inside. Thus, they were able to track the location of the truck and a building that looked like it could be Daejin's hideout. No matter how they run away, Teki will always be in their area so they could easily hunt them down. Currently, they already have numerous men about to attack the building. Inside the building, Daejin and Du Gion head back to their victory party. They join in the festivities and meals while outside, Hate Wang's men run up the stairs. But when Hei Wang barges into the room, the building is surprisingly bare, and there is no one inside. They scored the whole building all the way to the rooftop, but they didn't find a single soul. 
Thus, they sadly report to the executives and Yuzhong that it seems that Daejin's crew ran away. At the same time, in a nearby forest, Daejin emerges from the trees and apologizes to his men for his abrupt decision. He had just led them out of their hideout and out of the city. Earlier, when Do Yim was still talking with Daejin, the mention that Hate Wang would now target them made Daejin realize something. Instead of fighting, they should leave for now. They must increase their power so they have to go somewhere where Hate Wang can't reach them. Currently, Gangnam, the district they're in now, is completely controlled by Hate Wang. Thus, the only safe place they can go is north. Dajin stares at the district of Gangbuk, the place they ran to. He tells his men that for now, they are going to start a new life there. Hate Wang managed to grow into what they are today in just a year. But now, the Dejin crew themselves are going to grow too, just a lot faster. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the next part, comment below.